kind of impairment except for first rib position. You can also like, maybe in like the 0.1% of people who have it, pick up like a cervical rib. So I'll demonstrate it from behind the patient, Michael? Yes. Okay, Michael. And then I'll go ahead and go through it like I would in the clinic. So say we're gonna assess the right side. I'm gonna ask Michael to look all the way to his left. So we've got that contralateral rotation. And then now we're doing a lateral flexion. So flexion of his head would look like that. If he were neutral, lateral flexion would look like that. So just, we have him rotated and then we're laterally flexing him down. I'm stabilizing on this side so he doesn't rotate further. And we're assessing for the kind of quantity, quality, and end feel of the motion. So a positive test would look like, <laughs> a positive test would be a less motion and you're probably not gonna get much symptom provocation, but the patient might complain of more discomfort. So as a clinician, I'm coming out to the front of the patient. <laughs> Ideally, their feet would be flat on the floor, so a lot of times I have to get on my knees for this, or we're gonna have the patient scoot forward, sitting up tall. I'm gonna have him look all the way to his left, stabilizing right there. I'm gonna add maybe a little bit of passive rotation, and then some, we'll call this the cobra grip using the cobra grip to drop the head down into lateral flexion. And Michael, how much are you trusting me right now? No. <laughs> so it's tough. Your patients will want to guard you a lot and they'll want to kind of restrict your motion. Got a question? What if he, because he clearly has some kind of like apprehension, so yeah. like how do you address that while you're... You just like... Uh, you, you just go for you it? Know, just try to relax. We're not going to hang out here too long. You're asking them for symptoms. A lot of times, like, if you're doing this test, you're thinking there's something going on in this region, so rotation might be restricted to either side. So just taking all that into note, you're really looking for how does this side move relative, so we're going to sit down. Can you sit up straight? Sit up straight, try to relax. So we maybe get like an end feel right there versus, do we go the other way? So sit up straight. <laughs> so you get um, so you get like basically a difference side to side, and then you can correlate that with our next test, which we're gonna have Michael lay down onto his back. <laughs> so now we're looking at passive joint mobility of the first rib, kind of more so at the costo transverse joint. Um, this structure is like in a pretty complicated body region. There's a lot of muscles, kind of um, veins, arteries, nerves, kind of joints you gotta go through. So being able to identify the first rib on ourselves kind of helps me figure this out. So if you slide down your neck, you're basically like contacting the vertebrae in the spine. And then basically once your shoulder starts, you can imagine that's the start of your rib cage. So you're coming down the neck. First thing you come to is probably gonna be soft, like your trap. And then if you stay in that plane though, just right off where the vertebrae are, you come into something hard and if you push down on it, it feels really stiff. And your friends will come to you once they find out you're in PT school and be like, dude, I have a big knot in my upper trap. And really what they're palpating is your first rib. Interesting. Interesting. So to test on the table, we have the patient in supine. You're gonna side bend them towards the side you're assessing. That puts the scalenes and the upper trap muscles on slack because this is a joint mobility assessment and we're not trying to stretch those muscles out. Then I take, this hand is kind of just cradling his head, supporting it and kind of maintaining my side bend. With this hand, I'm coming in like for a handshake and where I'm gonna be contacting the patient's first rib is on the second MCP joint. So I'm sliding down sort of in the plane of his neck like we just did until I get with my web space kind of wrapped around his upper trap. I can kind of palpate his spinous process with the tips of my fingers. <laughs> Getting low, to use good body mechanics, I want my forearm parallel to the table. 
and you can see my thumb is pointing down towards his left front hip pocket, and I'm gonna follow that line of force. To contact the first rib more efficiently, we're gonna ulnarly deviate our wrist so that I'm kind of scooping up below the upper trap, and then I can make contact with the joint. So I'm coming in here, I've got R1, and now getting that final position, and then it's just right FHL. Body staying still, we're going down to the lower extremity, C working. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm just rocking back and forth on my right foot to, ass to assess the mobility of that joint. So I'll run through that again. Patients here in neutral. Sure. So we'll go through it onto the left side. So patients in neutral, I'm gonna side bend the hand head to the left. Slide my hand down. Kind of got web space in the shoulder region. Vulnerably deviate. And then now to my left again, just FHL. And we're assessing for kind of the quantity, quality, and end feel again, seeing how much the rib moves. You can assess the stiffness there. Additionally, with this test, you might get some symptom provocation. Any questions? Yeah, so weight shift with my toe. So if you have a pain, like if you're working with, if you have small hands or you're working with large patients, you might have to slide up and use a phalange because you don't want to be compressing their throat with your thumb. <laughs> your patients will not appreciate that. Um, I know we kind of talked about some of the diagnoses that these tests are associated with, but we're really just looking at the mechanics and the position and the like function of the first rib. These tests are like not really diagnostic. They're just looking for impairments and helping you paint a picture of what you want to treat for your patient. Any questions? All right, let's go ahead and practice so. 